Hello everyone and welcome to another Saluki Mania video. I'm Todd Hefferman with the Southern Illinoisan and with me is sports editor Les Winkler. Uh, we're here to talk some Saluki football. SIU open up Missouri Valley Conference play Saturday against Northern Iowa. Uh, kickoff is at 6 p.m. on Saturday night. It's family weekend and uh, the Blackout Cancer game, which is always an interesting uh, thing because they, they put different names on the, the backs of the guys, so you got to read their numbers and, and kind of memorize those. But um, you know, the, two and one, um, they could have beaten Memphis. I think if they don't give up the kickoff return, they probably win that game less. Uh, what, what did you like about their effort there? Uh, same things I've liked about the, the first two games. Uh, I, I like the way their uh, the way their defense runs to the ball. Uh, they did a pretty good job. Obviously, uh, they were playing in a um, FCS school, but uh, uh, FBS school. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean they didn't back down. Uh, they gave up uh, the offensive uh, the offensive line of Memphis kind of controlled the line of scrimmage at times. But I, th I thought their their backs and linebackers did a good job of getting to the ball. They certainly weren't intimidated. Um, they were as athletic as as I s suspected they were after the first two weeks. It was kind of hard to tell, especially after week one, because they were such a superior team to Mississippi Valley State. Yeah. But but I think they're you know the, the they um, Memphis didn't overwhelm them with their athleticism. Um, that that is a real positive. Uh, um, Coaches don't like to talk about moral victories, but uh, I, I think they have to be happy with what happened at Memphis. Yeah, I was really impressed with their offensive line, not giving up a sack. You know, Straub didn't really have to move a lot. He had to move a couple of times, step up in the pocket. He was very accurate, I thought. Um, the one interception, I don't think he saw the guy, so I think he was lofting it out there to see if Darrell could go chase it. Um, and it was an easy, easy interception for Memphis. So I think that's a learning experience for Straub right there. But I, I was very impressed with how he took if they gave him seven yards, he would take the five or six yards and, and go on to the next play. And the other thing is that they didn't uh, they didn't run the ball with a great deal of success, but they also didn't abandon the run the game. They kept with their they kept with their uh, game plan and were able to to do enough damage on the ground to open up things in the passing game. And again, I thought SIU receivers did did a very good job. There were one or two drops uh, that I remember, but for the most part, when they got their hands on the ball, they tucked it in and, and got the yardage that was there. And they made some great catches. I mean, Ralph Leonard, Connor Ruimo, that first touchdown, Straub threw it. You know, you're thinking, what is he heaving it up there for? He almost threw it off his back foot, but he put it in the absolute best place that a Wima could grab it, and he out-jumped the guy to get it in the end zone for a huge play. And, and on their playmakers made some plays. The the, the uh, long touchdown catch, I think, by Jimmy Jones, was uh, he made a nice move on the corner to, to get down the sideline. and uh, Was it Darrell? Darrell James, okay. yeah. Um, but uh, no, they, they're, they're, you know, their athletes proved that they were athletic to play, athletic enough to play with the, with the, with the FCS school. So we'll I keep saying FCS is FBS. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's it's our thing to, to the big guys, the big guys, the big boys, Memphis. Uh, so they, you know, they lost forty-four to thirty-one. They had almost they had twenty-one points at the half. Uh, maybe get it back and, and have a chance to win the game at the end. But So now we're going to conference play. They're going to play – there's seven teams in the Valley that are ranked. SIU will play six of them uh, before it's over. Don't get to play second-ranked North Dakota State. Uh, starting with Northern Iowa, they've um, – their typical, you know, mostly a run offense, but they've given up a ton of run yards. The teams are averaging almost six yards a carry against them. I think with SIU's three running backs, even if they stick with Isom and DJ Davis and Mixon, can be really tough for teams to, to handle because you have you have Isom who can take it 100 yards in one play, Davis who I think you can take 100 yards in one play, and then you throw in Mixon in the second half is kind of a mix-up because uh, he's a heavy back, but he also has some wheels if he gets out in the open field. Oh, he's he's I like his quickness and and uh, against Memphis the other night there there were times where he carried two or three tacklers for several yards. He yeah. he can certainly he's got he's got a nose to 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 get those. He, he gets the yardage that's there, and when he doesn't go down on the first hit, he he gets yards after contact, which is which is really fun to watch. I, that's that's kind of the kind of football I like to do. But and he did a good job of it, and 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 you're right, they they, they got a little lightning and thunder there. And uh, and really, Isom and, and Davis are uh, they're similar backs, but they're not exactly the same either. Davis has that he, he likes to he can uh, reverse his field and, and do some things. So it, it's it, it's an it's an interesting running attack. I was encouraged, just like you said, they stuck with the running game, even though they averaged less than three yards a carry. 
they were great on short yardage. You know, they kept it kept it at third and three. You know, even fourth and two. You know, manageable on fourth and down when they went for it on fourth down. And I and they haven't used this very much, but they had a couple games where Straub would run. You know, just a few times, mm -hmm. four, five, six yards every time he gets it. At least you do that. You add that element to the offense. Well, and and you um, before we start recording, you mentioned that the, their SIU's time of possession. It kind of reflects that they've maintained that that uh, running mentality a little bit too. And I think when you have a young defense, I think that's an important that's an important thing. The the more you can keep the younger guys off the field and you know rely on them less to make plays time after time after time. I mean that does nothing but help your offense, your defense if you can if you can maintain control of the football. And I thought they did a pretty good job of that at Memphis. They're going to face an, a bigger receiver. Anthony Miller from Memphis is listed at 5'11". He plays a little bit bigger than that. But now they're going to play uh, Doris Fountain from Northern Iowa. It's 6'2", 208. Uh, is lead, leading them in touchdowns and catches and yards. And Craig James is a great cornerback, but he's not big. So they've got it. I think maybe they can use those two safeties to give him some help potentially, and uh, both those safeties can play the runs, which I think will help their defense. Well, the the, the one the one thing that I took away from, and I wasn't there in person, I watched it on television, but uh, I, I don't believe they had a, a sack, uh, and the, the pressure would, would frequently come late. Uh, the Memphis quarterback had time to throw, and I mean that's still that's still the key. If you can make the quarterback throw the ball before he wants to, or when he has to, that's a whole lot of difference than standing there in pocket and then and looking out the field and picking out your receivers. So if they can keep if they can get generate some better pressure and that's where their that's where their youth and inexperience is up front. So I, I you know that's one area you expect to get better as the season rolls on. I would think. I think they think they made him roll out a little a couple times and and maybe throw it before he wanted to. Uh, that that pass where he missed he missed Miller it was wide open because mm -hmm. Chantres Spates fell down, missed him by like four yards off you know off his hands, but he he missed him uh, by by a little bit. And I think he was rushed by that by that defense. And they're going to get Sam Skinner back this week, the the freshman from Florida. I'm telling you, I, I don't want to put too much pressure on him, but he made a play every practice I was at during training camp. Made a sack, made made a tackle for loss. You know, tagging the guy. He's itching to play. Uh, Knighton has played terrific as a mm -hmm. redshirt freshman, and, and their tackles are healthy: Blake Parzich and uh, Malik Haynes and Xavier Furkron. I think you're seeing the de the depth of their defensive line, and especially their offensive line too. They're who they they may be missing. They should get Ernest Dye back, but they didn't play Jacob Martin at all uh, against Memphis. He's a great center, great guard. Uh, so I think you're seeing the depth on both lines is significantly better than last year. Right, and and the one thing too that I've kind of uh, kind of noticed that there there were a couple times, a couple series where. The, the the tack the tackling wasn't real crisp, but for the most part, if if SIU got a shoulder on them, uh, they knocked them they knocked them down in their tracks. So that that's that's an encouraging sign too. It's something that kind of the team had kind of struggled with the last year or two. But I, I, I like that aspect of their game this year too. We'll see what happens Saturday. Kickoff 6 p.m. Uh, the game will be on ESPN three. If you can't make it to Saluki Stadium, but uh, we hope to see you there. Thanks for joining us.